Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop on this fine even tide. What we have here, straight from J.A. Pan, is a troy trochoidal pump. And we'll get into the whys and the wherefores. This is a lubrication pump out of a piece of CNC gear. Now, I hope you'll excuse the dulcet tones of citizen science percolating off in the background. We have a cast or ductile iron, one and the same, NOP trochoid pump, Nippon Oil Pump Company Limited, made in JA Pen. Got a tanked uh, shaft pump. There is a thinly veiled dad joke in there somewhere. Which I, uh, this is the smartest thing I ever fucking seen. They put the size of the wrench on the top of the bolt. However, that looks a little big for eight. That, oh, coulda, woulda, shoulda. That is the smartest thing I've ever fucking seen, though. If they put the size, wouldn't that, uh, I'm patenting that, 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 that idea. It's 200 years too late. You put the size of the fastener, stamp it onto the, the wrench size, stamp it right onto the head of the fastener, huh? Huh? Fucking brilliant. And patently obvious to the most casual of observers, we have an industrial piece of kit here on account of this, the aluminium. It's not stainless steel, but still aluminium nameplate, what you can't wipe off with the merest whiff of brake clean. And that is what's in there. While this is a teeny tiny industrial pit of kit, it's still built for speed and cheapness you see the lobe two separate items and then uh, a very shaft pin just peened over so this would be a throwaway item you wouldn't you wouldn't go ahead and fix this no bearings uh, no rolling element bearings at all we're relying on oil light it appears to be oil light bushing not not a straight uh, phosphor bronze bushing but we're relying on the fluid being pumped to provide a fluid film a wedge of oil in order to make sure that there's no metal on metal contact while this thing is actually turning and if we pull this off very very i mean they they probably had this thing dialed in 50 years ago and, and it's as cheaply made as it's gonna get while still maintaining its its skookumness so here we have a steel part ground either side and there's no allowance for for thrust for taking up thrust what we're doing is we're, we're relying on the mechanical properties of this ductile iron of course ductile iron has nodules of graphite it's very soft and graphite has incredible uh, lubricating properties so couple that with a thin film of oil and you get very little wear but this has never been used and we see there is indeed some marking on there. So there, there has been and there is touching, but it's not enough to wear it out prematurely. Now we can tell this is a low pressure pump. How can we tell that? Because the seal here, the single lip seal, there is nothing to allow any bypass that gets in behind that seal to go back to the low pressure side. So Oh no, that's not true. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that right there. So this will take a fair bit of pressure, actually. Even though it's just a lube pressure pump, uh, they have a port here, a T-drilling, in behind of the seal so that this is the low pressure side, as we see from the in. there actually be suction here. And this is the out. So if any high pressure leaks past the seal or no, rather past the bushing here along the shaft, then it can't build up pressure behind this seal in order to blow it out because it goes back to the inlet side. So how this pumps on the inlet side, we have oil here, we have no oil on the outlet. We put in the cylinder, the body of the pump here, and then we put in the lobed rotor. Oui, qu'est-ce que tu veux, ma jolie? I got an ouch, ouch. Oh, where? Right here. Oh. How'd that happen? Oh, I don't know. What's that machine right there? How does that work? This works. <laughs> uh, you see this? What, what's this look like in the, in the middle? 
You see the cross section? What's that look like to you? Um, a screw. A screw? That, or maybe it looks like a flower. You see it's got a shaft and a hole. And then we put the shaft through the bushing hole. Okay. And then it fits just so. Really, really tight. And then we spin it. We spin it really fast. But, um, what is that right beside it? Oh, that's, it goes on like this. That seals it all up tight. But I want to show you what's happening on the inside. Okay, so what happens is when this is turning, you see this side of the flower is expanding. So it's pulling. And on this side of the flower, it's contracting. You see it's getting smaller? Yeah? That means that it's if you put water in this side or oil, that it pulls... Oh, your finger hurts, huh? It hurts even if there's juice on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a little bit of... Ow. Oh. Here, why don't, you, why don't we put a Band-Aid on you? Yeah. Here. Mama said, um, no. But you know, we can use that. One of that to help. Would that help too? Oh, absolutely. This is what Papa does. Look at my Band-Aid boys and girls. Oh. oh, your hands are beat right up. I want to stay in the shop with you. I know you do, but then I can't cuss. It's okay. So now you know how it works. What's the failure mode of these things? One is just a cavitation wear. So if you throttle the inlet, if there's some, uh, if there's some restriction on the inlet, the pressure drops so low that the fluid cavitates. It actually boils. It, it forms little vapor bubbles. And when those vapor bubbles collapse, there's a, there's a shock wave. There is a supersonic shock wave, and that takes out a chunk of material. As you'll see, what, what you'll end up seeing is you'll see dull sections, sort of bubbly looking dull sections on here. And of course, that changes the clearance, internal clearance in the pump, and eventually it just won't pump because it doesn't seal. So that is a, a totally worn out pump. But prior to that, more than likely is you'll get some damage from just from schmoo being in there, uh, gold nuggets and ball bearings and so forth. These, you know, you look at the clearances in here, it wouldn't take much of a metal chip to get in there. Remember, this is on a machine. Wouldn't take much of a metal chip to get on there in order to uh, stove that right up. Okay, boys and girls, let's put it back together. Okay, come over here. Oh, Papa, can get your step get... stool. Do you want your step stool? This is my step stool. Yep. Can, oh, Papa, um, can we make something for my class again? Would you like that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's uh, let's make something made for a, your class. Yeah, okay. Made a metal. So, what we do is we got how many screws do we have? Um. They also call these two. bolts. Bolts. How many? One, two, three. Okay. Three bolts. How many holes? Three. Okay. Hey, you're you're catching on. Righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. Do you remember that little song? No. Oh, you sing it for us. Righty, tidy, tidy, steady, tidy. And then once you get those in, you'll need the spanner. Can I do one? Yeah. What's the spanner? It's also called a wrench. Oh, can I do it? How do you put it on? Keep trying. There you go. I'm going to help you with the first one and then you do the next ones on your own. So we don't tighten it all the way down. We want to tighten it in sequence. So let's try this. Okay, now you do it. Oh yeah, she's cool. I just uh, cut down on the cussing and swearing. Ah! You can do this cake for your porch. Cake? You want some, Papa? Please. Let's leave this. Yeah, we'll come back after the cake, right? Yep. Can you say, boys and girls, keep your little Richard in a bad habit? I don't want to.